Good morning, everyone. Welcome back on this kind of gray Monday. We're so excited to have you joining us uh, again. My name is Dana. I'm a member of the education department here at the Aquarium of the Pacific coming from Long Beach, California. And today we're going to be rolling through a couple really great programs during our online academy. And we would love, love, love to have you join us and participate throughout those programs. So during um, our, our classes this morning, we are going to throw up this number right here. That's going to be 562-286-1838. We'd love to have you text us, ask us questions, share your observations, um, anything like that, anything that you're wondering and you want to know a little bit more about. We're all about teaching and learning together. So go ahead and shoot us a text if you want to know something else. Otherwise, we're going to start with our first program this morning, which is all about our friends living in the sea. So uh, we're going to be watching a video here and I would love if you could uh, whisper your observations. Now I would say yell but there might be people in your houses that are working right now so if you see something that you recognize go ahead and whisper it as loud as you can but make sure you're whispering. So if you see a uh, sea turtle okay anything like that uh, just share those observations with the person next to you or with the screen itself. Let's go ahead and press play. Let's check out some of our friends in the sea. <laughs> Now something I'm noticing through this video is that there are a lot of different colors under the ocean. What kind of colors do you see? They remind me of chocolate ice cream. Oh, these look like they're in a tuxedo. We got some bright orange clownfish. Now an octopus could be all sorts of colors, but this one's looking fairly red at the moment. This is our giant Pacific. So far, what's your favorite animal that we've seen? We've got James in the studio here saying his favorite animal was the turtle! All right, my friends. So once again, if you are making observations through that uh, video right there, feel free to text us 562-286-1838. Remember, texting grades do apply and make sure you have adult permission before you join us this morning. Now, I am again joined in the studio today uh, by James, who's going to be controlling what's going on behind me. I have Luke off to the side, who's going to be taking your questions and passing them into me. And round of applause, we have a new guest in our studio today. We have another staff member coming in and training with us. We have Jen. So uh, over the next couple weeks, Jen's back there dancing, waving her hands. I think uh, she's very happy to be back here at the aquarium. And so uh, you'll be hearing us introduce Jen through our programs and, and pretty soon she'll be in front of the camera teaching you. So uh, we're always excited to have some staff coming in and saying hello and helping us out in here. So with that being said, Let's get started talking about some of our other friends in the sea. We got to see a lot of them on that video just a moment ago. I'm going to have James pull up a random friend and I'll introduce you. How's that sound? All right. He's scrolling through trying to figure out. Oh, what? All right, my friends. So this right here, this is a frog fish, but it doesn't really look like a frog. Well, it kind of looks like a frog, right? It's kind of got those bulging eyes over here right? It's got that mouth ready to catch some food right here. Frogfish are uh, a tropical species for the most part. They are very colorful. What do you notice about this frogfish? What color would you say that is? Yeah, this is orange. Now I think we have another really great one and it has a little doodad right here. And so we're going to take a look at that super bright frogfish uh, in just a moment. We're going to have to find it and pull it up for you. But you'll see this one's kind of a dull orange. Uh, it's got some bright coloration right in here, maybe some bright yellows. But when we pull this next one up, you'll see another really bright color. Now, why would animals in the ocean want to have bright colors? What do you think those colors might mean? What do you think those colors might do for them? Well, some bright colors are warning signs right? Don't get too close. I'm venomous or I'm poisonous or I have spines and I'm going to hurt you, right? 
some bright colors are to attract a mate, right? Uh, if I'm very bright and... Vi Ooh, look at that one. There's a little doodad I was talking about. Another frogfish. Very bright. Um, some bright colors might be because um, they're blending in with a colorful habitat. Remember I said these were often found in tropical waters? And so those bright colors are going to um, help them blend in with all the colors that are going on on a coral reef. All right, my friends, so this is just one example of some colors. Let's see if we can pull up a local animal that has uh, either bright or dull colors. We'll have to see. Now, we are getting some questions coming in already. Nora, I see you had a question here. We're going to get to that in just a moment. I love where you're taking it, and maybe we'll be able to talk about sea turtles and jellies here in just a moment. What about these animals right here? These are bat sea stars or bat stars. And as you notice, they're all different colors. We've got pink. We've got orange. We've got a whole array of beautiful colors. But what kind of habitat do they live in? Well, bat stars are actually living in really dark uh, blues and grays and greens. So why are they so colorful, I wonder? Well, sometimes the rocks they're living on are covered in algaes. And those algaes can be right, bright and colorful, and so maybe they're uh, blending in with their habitat, right? We never know unless we learn a little bit more about those animals. All right, now Nora had a question about sea turtles and jellies. So let's see if we can get a picture of a sea turtle or a jelly up here. Now, Nora wants to know why do sea turtles have shells and why do they eat jellies? Great question, Nora. So all of these animals, the way that they're going to protect themselves or uh, find food are something called adaptations. It's something that an animal has that helps them survive in the natural habitat. And so that shell is an adaptation to protect themselves, right? That shell is really hard. Imagine if you had to crack through a turtle shell in order to eat. You'd have to have the right tools, right? And a lot of our ocean animals do not have those tools. So only something that has really strong jaws or really strong teeth is gonna be able to get through that turtle shell. Um, for example, some sharks try to eat turtles, but they gotta get through that shell. In fact, sea turtles will actually turn their back towards the shark making sure that it can't get through to its, its more vulnerable body. Um, as far as why do they eat jellies, well, as you can see here, jellies are really soft, okay? You can kind of see as they drift through the ocean. We call them jellies because they kind of feel like jelly, all right? Um, there's not a whole lot to their body. So sea turtles will feed on jellies because they're very nutritious, and uh, they actually have another adaptation within their throat that helps them keep jellies down. They have really funny looking little like finger-like protrusions in their throat. And so once you eat a jelly, it can kind of just slip back out. And so those little protrusions stop it from sticking, uh, from going back out, which is very cool. So again, all adaptations. Now we're gonna talk about some other uh, observations and adaptations as we move through this program. We're gonna, of course, be taking your questions. We're gonna be exploring some different local animals, maybe some different uh, reef animals, but then we're actually gonna be going on a journey with one of our special friends who lives right here off of our California coastline. And that is going to be the California gray whale. We like to call her Gracie. So we're going to be Gracie here later on. Uh, but before we get there, let's go ahead and meet maybe uh, two more animals. But we're going to do that by observing their colors. All right. So join me for a game. We're going to do a puzzle here. All right. Oh, gray. Hmm. What kind of animals might we have here at the aquarium or out in the Pacific Ocean that are gray? Let's see if we can flip some tiles and see if we recognize anything. What do you see? Oh, hmm. Ah, okay. We've got some triangle shapes here. I see that gray coloration. Do any of you recognize this animal? What do you think it might be? Well, what animal might have these adaptations? Remember, I talked about things that help an animal survive. That right there is an adaptation. And what it is, is it's a triangular shaped fin. Well, what animals in the ocean have fins? And we have another one right down here. Hmm. A gray, kind of long animal with triangular shaped fins. What do you think it might be? Go ahead and text us your answers if you think you have an idea. Otherwise, whisper it as loud as you can at the screen. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, a lot of you had it right. Let's go ahead and flip some more tiles and see what it might be. A 
if you all guessed a shark, you're right. Now, this is a leopard shark. This is a local animal that lives right here in Southern California. In fact, raise your hand if you're from San Diego or Southern California, even more south of us, San Diego, Chula Vista, um, Coronado, anything like that. Well, these animals actually like to come in right along the coastline down there. In fact, right in La Jolla, we have a little shallow area that these sharks like to congregate. And we found that they're mostly pregnant females, which is pretty cool. They come in during the summer months and you can walk right out in the water and be surrounded by sharks. Isn't that amazing? There's so much that we can discover about our local oceans right here off our coast. So our leopard shark, our long gray animal with triangle fins, they are uh, very special to our coastline, just like Gracie might be. Let's see if we can find another color that we can explore together. Let's see if we can pull up a different puzzle. All right. Ooh, red. I like this. Okay, think of any red animal in the ocean. Oh man, the list goes on and on, right? Let's see if we can turn some tiles and see what we can discover. Ooh. I'm seeing, ah, this helps. Okay, so this is a long, strong arm. Looks like we might have another one right up here. What do you think? What might be going on behind this screen? Hmm. Well, if you have an idea, let's hear it. On the count of three, as loud as you can whisper. One, two, three. Ah, ah. You might have that right. Let's see if we can turn some other tiles and see what we can, what we can figure out. All right, everyone, if you guessed a crab, you were right. Now, some things that told us it might have been a crab are these long, strong arms that I talked about, and also that bright red coloration. There's a lot of crabs that live off our coastline that are bright red. But are all crabs red? What do you think? Can you think of any crab that isn't red? Hmm. Hermit crabs don't always appear red. In fact, a lot of little hermit crabs that live in our local tide pools, uh, they have like more of a, a brown arm and brown body with little spots on it. And they live inside of snail shells, right? So they might not appear red. Um, we also have um, spider crabs, which are more of a bright orange, maybe a little more yellow. If you've never heard or seen a Yeti crab before, you should all go check out a Yeti crab because those are some cool looking crabs. Now, um, you all did a wonderful job making those observations. We're gonna jump back to our studio background and we're gonna answer some of the questions that you've all brought in. And then we're gonna go on a migration with Gracie and we'll explain what a migration is in just a moment. So Miss Smith's class, welcome. We're so happy you're joining us this morning. Uh, they wanna know how do jellyfish swim? Oh my gosh, that's such a good observation. Let's pull up that video of the moon jellies again. So as you can see here, jellies have two main parts to them. They have this upper part, which is called the bell, and then they have these tentacles, here we go, that come off the bottom of them. And both of those parts are very important for the jelly because the tentacles catch food, but the bell is what's allowing it to move. You can watch, less so in this video, let's see if we can get our jelly webcam on. Um, they tend to be a little bit more pulsing. And so jellies pulse through the water, okay? Now, are they swimming though? That's the real question. So jellies are actually something called plankton. Have you ever heard of plankton before? Yeah, we usually think of plankton as itty bitty teeny tiny creatures, right? And yet plankton actually just means any organism that cannot swim against the current. So as you see here, even this big jelly behind me is considered plankton. So if a big current were to come through, whoosh, right, moving water, they wouldn't be able to swim against it. However, um, you can see, see that one's pulsing right there. That's that pulsing movement that I mentioned. So they're able to kind of pulse in different little directions, but their overall movement is going to be determined by the current. So I don't know if I'd call it swimming so much as floating or drifting. That was a great question. Now, Nora wants to know, can frogfish change color? Hmm. Nora, that's a really good question, and I won't lie to you. I actually had to step off the screen and ask everyone else in here, do frogfish change colors? Because that's something that I didn't know. And we came to a consensus that we don't think they can. Things can grow on them and settle on them that might make them appear a different color, but the fish itself is not going to be changing colors, though a lot of fish can. So that was a really great, well-thought-out question. 
Loki wants to know what colors can an octopus turn? Ah, Loki, I love that you brought this up. We're going to actually show you a video. So octopus have things within their body called chromatophores. It's a really big word, but what it means is they can change colors. In fact, they are camouflage masters. They can hide in almost any environment. So James is working back there to pull up this video of an octopus changing colors. And they can do it so fast. Okay, the way it works is those chromatophores, those cells in their body that I mentioned, they can expand. Ooh, here we go. So I'm going to step off so you can really just get the full glory of this. So it was really dark. It's kind of red. And there it goes. Oh, my gosh. Do you still see it? It's kind of hard. Now, you'll notice it also changed textures. And there it goes. It's going back to red. So they can go from uh, red. They often go white. There's different species of octopus. One octopus is known as the blue ringed octopus. And its body is bright yellow. And it's got bright blue rings all over it. Really beautiful. Very colorful. Octopus can kind of turn browns. They can turn blacks. They can turn... Help me out here. What colors can octopus turn? Kind of covered a range of them. Orange, right? It really just depends on the species. Yellow, white. We've got all sorts of them. Now, we do have a local uh, octopus species here that's called the two-spot octopus. And most of the time, they're kind of a reddish brown. But they have a spot right there. <laughs> they made that very hard. But you can sort of see it right under here. So there's, oh, oh my gosh. How cool is that? Right? So really amazing at changing colors and um, camouflaging into their environment. Now, Emma wants to know, why do starfish spit out their bellies to eat? Emma, such a cool fact, right? So sea stars, they like to, um, they have their stomach inside, right? Which we all have our stomach inside, I, I would hope. And then what happens is they're going to turn their stomach inside out just like this onto or into whatever food they're trying to eat. Usually they're eating animals that are in shells. And so they put the stomach into the shell there and it kind of digests the food. And then they go and slurp it all back inside, just right in there. How cool is that? Now, imagine if that's how we ate like a big dinner together. And we were like, oh, yes, dinner's here. And then we all just went Bleh, and put our stomach on the table. Might not be a great party, right? But sea stars are well adapted to get into the shells of their food. So there's that adaptation word again. All right, my friends, are you ready to go on a migration with Gracie today? So a migration is when an animal travels really far from point A to point B. Now, gray whales along the California coastline, they migrate from Alaska, which is way up north, all the way down to Baja, which is down below California. So Baja, California. And they feed up north and they have their babies down in Baja. Why might that be? Well, we're going to explore the California coastline with Gracie and see what other friends that we might meet in the sea. So let's go ahead and meet Gracie. All right, so friends in the sea. This is Gracie right here. Now, this is going to be all about sounds. And she's going to run into friends, and we have to identify what friend might be making that sound. But first, let's listen uh, to what a gray whale sounds like. Can you hear it? I can't hear it yet. Oh, <gasps> that just sounds like somebody knocking, right? Now, at first you might be like, well, that doesn't sound like any whale I've ever heard. But that is actually a recording of a gray whale out in the ocean. So that's exactly what they sound like down there, which is kind of cool. So listen one more time. Did you hear it? Okay, I heard it really well that time. So again, it kind of sounds like knocking. Keep that in your head, okay? All right, let's go ahead and go on our migration with Gracie. She's gonna start swimming off the screen that way. <laughs> so you can see Gracie uses her really strong tail to move, right? And we call them a gray, ooh. What, what is, huh, what was that noise? kind of sounded squishy. Now we've actually met a squishy friend already today. Let's see if we might have it right. It kind of sounded like a squishy jelly to me. Let's find out. Look at that. That's a squishy jelly. 
Now, when jelly jellies are swimming through the ocean, they don't actually sound like that, right? But that was a good way to remind us that they kind of pulse that sound. So Gracie is going to be meeting jellies all along her migration route. And that's because we have different species of jellies all up and down the coastline of California. So good job, everyone. Great job guessing jelly. Let's see if Gracie can continue on her swim now. Hmm. What do you see around here? I wonder what that might be. What animal could be in the ocean um, making chomping noises with their teeth, right? It kind of sounded like a... What could that be? Well, what animals do we know of that have big mouths, can chomp? Huh. I don't know. What do you think it might be? Let's see if we can swim more and see what kind of animal might be making that. Oh! That makes sense. A really big mouth. In fact, we've learned about this animal already. It's gray, it's long, and it has triangular shaped fins. Now this one's not a leopard shark. This doesn't have the bars and stripes that you'd need to be a leopard shark, but this is another kind of shark. And as you can see, it's got those triangle fins that we talked about earlier. Now, oftentimes people want to know why do sharks have triangular shaped fins? Well, they have fins coming out of their body to help with stabilization. If you look at just the shape of the body, what would happen if I grabbed that shark? Let's go this way. I grabbed that shark and I threw it and it didn't have fins. Well, it's kind of shaped like a football. So that shark's going to be moving through the ocean like this, right? It's going to have a beautiful spiral like when you throw a football. But when you add these fins on, it's going to use it to stabilize in the water. So those fins on the side are there to help turn, okay? And that fin on top is to stop it from spinning. Check it out. Pretty cool, huh? So now you can look at the shapes of animals and try to compare it to other things in our lives, like the shape of a shark to a football, right? So that was uh, one way that we can learn and discover a little bit more about our animals. Now, I know Gracie has a really long swim, so let's see if we can get back to Gracie and uh, see how she's doing. There she goes. Ooh. Okay, now this sound I recognize. What animal might be out there with two strong arms making snapping noises? What do you think it might be? Hmm. Two strong arms. Snapping. Ah. Let's see if it's a crab. Let's find out. <gasps> there it is. So this was a crab. And you can see those two strong arms like we saw earlier, right? I can kind of right here with it. And they have those snapping claws. Now, claws are another adaptation of our animals. The claws on a crab help protect itself from predators and capture food. Now, what color is this crab? It's kind of orange, right? Good, good observation. But the other crab we looked at was more red, right? What shape might this crab be? There's kind of all sorts of shapes, but if you look back at this photo, it's more of an oval, right? So start to look for shapes and start to look for colors in the animals around you. Not in the ocean, but maybe look around the room. Look around your room right now. I challenge every single one of you to find a square. Are there squares in our room? Hmm. I'm looking at a tissue box, like with tissue paper. Um, and that that's square in our studio. What about in your room? What do you see? Right? So I want to encourage you all to just look around you. Look for shapes, look for colors, and make those connections. All right, my friends. Now, uh, Gracie has one more animal that she's going to explore. She's so close to getting home. Whether she's in Baja or in, or I'm sorry, Baja or Alaska, we don't know. But let's see if Gracie finds any other friends. Wait a second. I remember this sound. What do you think that was? I feel like we've heard it before. Hmm. It was kind of like a knocking. What animal sounded like it was knocking? 
Let's see if we can find out. That's right, everyone. Gracie found other gray whales. Now, somebody asked before, how can you tell which one's Gracie and which one's another gray whale? So gray whales have different patterns on their body based on uh, markings and everything like that. So I knew that Gracie had a couple big patches right here so I could recognize Gracie. Uh, but another gray whale might look a little bit different. Gray whales are known to have kind of mottled gray skin and they have patches of barnacles growing on them. The barnacles like to join them on their migration. Um, but what you can see through that migration route is that Gracie runs into a lot of friends in the ocean. Now, she didn't run into a frogfish, but that's because she's hanging out along our California coastline. In fact, this is a gray whale right here. Everybody listen. Do we have the sound in this one? I'll make the sound, ready? What was that? So this is a gray whale swimming along our coast. In fact, I believe, given the fact that we're seeing all this dirt and mud in the water right there, that that gray whale was probably inside our harbor. Gray whales typically only feed in Alaska, way up north. But in the last four or five years or so, we've had gray whales coming into L.A. Harbor. Okay, so any of you who live in the area, if you know where, um, let's see, like, um, all the big cranes are by the ports. Uh, we've had gray whales come in right over here. And so they like to dive down in our shallow waters and take mouthfuls of mud, which to us might not sound so great. But for a gray whale, within that mud is actually a lot of food. So that cloud of mud we saw coming off that gray whale's mouth was actually them getting rid of all the dirt and trying to get just the food in their mouth. But as you can see, I mentioned that coloration, right? We've been talking about a lot about colors. You can see the mottled spots on it and you can see those patches of barnacles. So let's do a quick recap here because we are at the end of our program. What did we discover today? Well, we discovered that there's shapes in the ocean, right? You can look around, you can find squares, you can find circles, you can find footballs, you can find all sorts of different shapes. You can find triangles, right? We also discovered that there's a lot of different colors in the ocean. We saw that bright orange frogfish, that kind of red orange frogfish, that gray shark, those clear jellies. I think we even saw some orange or kind of pink jellies. Uh, we saw a lot of different colored sea stars. So my friends, what I hope you take away from this morning is just the fact that if you look a little bit harder and you look for those shapes, those colors, and even those sounds, you listen for those sounds, you will discover so much more about the habitat around you. Now, we are running out of time here in the studio, but we're going to be back at what's uh, at 10 o'clock talking about, let's find out, talking about sharks. Uh, which is always a fun topic. We'd love to have your questions coming in. So thanks for joining us during our nine o'clock program. We'll see you back here at 10 and have a wonderful Monday morning. Bye everyone.